you look at biology, you've really got four major kinds of chemicals. You've got nucleic acids, DNA, RNA. They're more in the news than any other these days. Proteins, the workhorses of living things, lipids, fats, and glycans. Glycans, a term that people are not very used to yet, but I think will become uh, used to because really the traditional terms like polysaccharide or carbohydrates or even sugars fall short in my mind of, of getting, giving you a sense of the enormous territory that glycomics can cover. So for instance, what's your blood type? Your blood type is determined by the glycans, the carbohydrates that decorate your red blood cells. Uh, anybody in the audience had an anti-doping test lately? It's okay because you might have passed, but that test was probably looking for specific glycans that would reveal that you'd altered your physiology to gain some sort of edge. And just to step outside medicine for a second, how do plants stand up? Whether they're redwoods or zinnias, it's because of cellulose that reinforces the stem, cellulose complexly linked to glycans. Glyconet is going to concentrate on the medical aspects. And uh, so, for instance, I, I mentioned that red blood cells are decorated with glycans, but decor decorated is a pretty weak word. This is the edge of the cell membrane. Those are glycans. And that whole, uh, that hairy set of glycans is called the glycocalyx. Every cell is coated with it. it uh, char and characterizing those in detail is right now beyond the technology that's available. But this glycocalyx is enormously important in living creatures. So for instance, the influenza virus gains access to susceptible cells, especially in your upper respiratory system, in two ways that relate to glycans. You've probably heard of uh, flu viruses being characterized as H and N something, H5N1. So hemagglutinin actually attaches to researchers that are largely glycans to gain access to the, allow the influenza virus to gain access to cells. And then the N, neuraminidase, actually splits glycans on the cell surface to allow influenza viruses to leave. You get a flu vaccine, or as has already been mentioned, you get Tamiflu. The flu vaccine raises antibodies. What are they? They're proteins with glycans on their surface. Cancer is another one. Uh, abnormal glycosylation of proteins is apparently ubiquitous in cancers. Metastasis involves cells moving, recognizing surfaces. All of this is part of glycomics. And incidentally, that glycocalyx, if on the surface of a tumor cell, actually allows that cell to hide some of its somewhat different surface proteins that might otherwise be recognized by the immune system. And finally, just one more, epigenetics. In DNA labs these days, that is the topic. Not so much the actual sequence of genes in the human genome, but how those genes, how the expression of those genes is altered by proteins and glycans. People see all kinds of opportunities. Glycans involved in every single thing, metastasis, cell-to-cell -cell adhesion. And so that diagram downplays just how challenging this is. This is more like it. This is a painting by a friend of mine named David Goodsell at the University of California, San Diego. And it's a high-res image of two cells about, uh, in very close contact. And if you were to blow this image up to the size of a single human cell, it would take up uh, most of the space in this room. Even beyond medicine, glycomics is going to be one of the big sciences of the future. There's a huge opportunity here for Canada, and that opportunity is going to be led by Glyconet. <laughs>